what are you guys doing here? Uh, uh, no, I'm not doing anything. I'm just polishing my helmet. What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Now today, uh, going kind of old school, I guess. Uh, I haven't done a painting video in a while. You know, it's kind of a different thing. Uh, you know, some of you like it, some of you don't. I, uh, I never had kind of a great following with the sign painting stuff and the, you know, all that. So, I kind of got away from it for a while, but here we are. So, I've been doing a bunch on my motorcycle lately and, uh, you know, riding it, getting it out, doing stuff like that. If you haven't seen those videos, go back and check those out after this one. But, uh, the little, uh, brain bucket here. It's looking kind of plain. You know, I picked this one up a while ago. I have a few older helmets and, uh, you know, they were driving me nuts. You know how older helmets get. They start getting uh, kind of crunchy inside and the foam starts deteriorating. So I picked this up a few years ago and basically just been rocking it. I really do. I kind of like the old school look on the helmets. Uh, you know, I'm just that kind of guy. Anyway, I really like these uh, Biltwell helmets. They're, they're, you know, clean, functional and uh, they kind of give you that retro look. I'm actually thinking about getting an open face as well. I have been wanting to add a few things to it. Now, again, nothing over the top, nothing too crazy, but kind of what I'm thinking is the old school kind of just racing, you know, racing number circle on the side, and then maybe a little something on the back. I don't know, it's got their, their logo, maybe, maybe on the front. I don't know, we'll see when we get there. Um, but first, I kind of want to focus on the sides. So first things first, when uh, when I'm kind of looking at this thing, I know I want to do something, you know, here. Um, both sides, I want to make sure I have enough room. Sizing is important on stuff like this. Now I could go way over the top and do some huge graphic that kind of goes whatever. But like I said, I want to kind of just keep it clean, simple, um, you know, kind of fit that retro look that the helmet gives me. Um, so what I'm thinking is the old school, just kind of racing, you know, the circle with the number in it. I don't know if there's a technical name for that, but, you know, I've always kind of just dug that look. And, uh, yeah, the, the easy way to accomplish this is to kind of look around, find something you want that shape. So, uh, you know, look around. And what I found was just an old crappy mug that... The circle's about the right size for what I want. Now, maybe I could have gone a little bit bigger on this. I haven't actually started yet, but I don't know. I kind of think that'll look all right. So anyway, I'm going to get some of my paint supplies out here, start laying this thing out, play around with this. I might find something else, you know, maybe a little bit bigger circle. And, uh, yeah, go from there. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do here is get the old paint thinner out. I'm gonna give this thing a good wipe down. I know just over the years of owning it, I've you know, wiped the bugs and crap off of it, used a little like quick wax, stuff like that, just to kind of keep it nice. Plus it's also covered in a bunch of dust and crap. So specifically where I plan on really, uh, where I plan on painting this thing, I'm gonna make sure that's all good and wiped down. Maybe I could do something across the mouth there. Anyway, anywhere I might think about painting, I might give it a good wipe down. That way it's got plenty of time to dry between now and when I decide to start painting on it. So I did a little playing around. Um, I originally had the uh, coffee mug. I set it over there. Um, it was a little small for what I wanted. Rolls of tape, they work great. So I'm going to do kind of a little lining up side to side, get me some... Uh, Get some landmarks here to where I can have this lined up, you know, the same on both sides. And uh, we'll start getting this thing laid out here. Yes, I'm old school. I use a yardstick for doing this. Um, is it super precise? No, but it works great for marking straight lines. And that's what I learned with. So we'll call it two and three quarter. Now I know this isn't going to show up for you guys. It's hard for me to see as well, but uh, it works pretty well for what I'm trying to do here. 
yes I am just going to eyeball it all right about there and basically I'm just going to press this thing in try not to move it we're going to give us a nice hopefully circular mark on the old helmet here it ain't gonna be perfect it's not computer generated and you know that's half the fun of doing sign painting it's not computer generated it's not easily duplicated it's not something you can just run into the computer click a few keys and uh, you know away you go with 20 of these I could have a I could have a vinyl sticker printed up already come in here and go there we go and it wouldn't be worth making a video of. You guys wouldn't care. Nobody would care. Oh, look, another helmet with a sticker on it. Who gives a crap? This is hand painted. Not going to be another one like it in the world. That's half the fun. So, we're going to move on to the numbers. And you'll never guess what number I'm going to use. Never. What's going to look good in there? Cobweb on there, dang. I need to get this thing out more often. Three inch, no, two and a half. All right, well, for this project, I think I'm gonna go pretty simple on the colors. I'm gonna use some uh, one shot maroon, one shot ivory. I kind of want that old weathered look, and based on the idea that I want to go back and weather this afterwards. I actually want it fairly thin. I get out my handy dandy mixing tool here, give this paint a little bit of a mix. Yeah, I could have shook it, but I like doing it this way. And I need a rag. One of the best rags you'll ever buy. An old t-shirt. Um, no, I won't be wearing this unless we get to uh, enough likes on this video so if you guys want to see me put this thing on go ahead and throw the video a like um, I may let it dry out a little bit it's not going to have fresh paint on it that's for sure get this mixed up pretty well there we go clean that off right back in the toolbox I go ahead and get my brush loaded up here and we'll get to work so the first thing I'm going to start with is just kind of going around my circle. I probably could have used a bigger brush, but in this case, I don't mind if there's some brush strokes and stuff like that in it, because like I said, I kind of plan on weathering this after the fact. You know what I need in this instance. I need the inspiration of my good friend Bob Ross. What a guy, huh? No, I'm not gonna drink it. I just like to see a, you know, happy little Bob Ross while I'm painting. Since I'm not painting any happy little trees. If you remember back at the beginning of it, when I showed you guys kind of my outline of this thing, I know it's probably impossible to see right now from your angle, but uh, basically I'm just following slightly inside that line, trying to keep a nice clean circle. And then going back and just doing a little here and there even the thing up. This is way harder than it looks, trying to hold this thing at a good angle, hold it steady, and then also following the curvature of the helmet. So, I'm not too overly concerned because I am probably going to go around and give it an outline after the fact. Uh, different, different shade, I may give it uh, I may give it the maroon, I may give it the black, not 100% sure. So then I'm just going to go around, start filling in my numbers, 
And again, I'm not too concerned about being exactly pinpoint on my corners and everything like that because I am going to come back after and give these an outline as well. I am going to keep the black metallic in the middle from the helmet, so I don't want to get too wild here and get way outside my lines so that black metallic doesn't show through or I have some mess ups in there. And yes, I know, if my dad was here, he'd be yelling at me, use a mall stick, use a mall stick. For those of you that don't know what a mall stick is, I'll uh, try and grab one here. I'll insert a clip of it, because I'm not going to stop painting right now just to grab a mall stick. Mall stick. Yay. Basically, it's just something I could lean against instead of... You see me using my pinky to steady my hand. That's just the way I've always done it. And, uh, like I said, he'd be yelling at me right now. I'm not overly concerned about some brush strokes, some imperfections in it, because I am going to go back and weather it after the fact. So... If you see some uh, some janky bits, you can see down here at the bottom, you see a little bit of, of uh, brush strokes and stuff like that. Down in there, like I said, not super concerned. I will give it just a hair more to try and even it out some, but uh, that all adds to the effect. And the thinner I can get the paint, the easier it's gonna be for me to go back and weather it later once this is all dry. So I am not doing this in the way that I would if I was doing traditional sign painting or trying to make something nice, uh, you know, that would last a long time. I'm trying to make it so it's intentionally uh, flawed and can be weathered easier. There we go. Step one complete. Now to do it again on the other side and uh, you know, come up with maybe an idea for somewhere else above the lid or below, something like that. I think I'm just gonna probably put my name on there, something like that. Maybe do a little bit of, a little bit of this guy right here, something along those lines. And uh, yeah, but first I gotta flip it over and do the other side, which is gonna be even more challenging because I have wet paint over here now. So we'll come back to it in a minute here. So maybe I'll use this on the other side just because I do already have the wet paint and uh, I can kind of show you guys what I'm talking about with it. Alright, here's where I differ a little bit. Now, like I said, I got into pinstriping a handful of years ago. No, I'm not doing any pinstriping. What I really do, I love this little, it's a Kafka 3, uh, I just love this little brush and you know most sign painting guys would probably argue with me that this isn't the right way to do it and it's definitely not the way I was taught to do it but I'll tell you what the control I get with this thing is so much better than a little bitty sign painting brush now to give you an example I'll flash something else up on the screen here as a kid, this is what I like to do. As a kid, I had a tiny, tiny brush that I would go through and make all these little decals. I'd do the sign painting. This is how I learned how to sign paint, was painting race cars uh, as a young kid. A lot of guys would build race cars. I raced myself and uh, you know, would always paint my cars, maybe see if I could throw a clip in here, or throw a picture of one of my cars in there. This is, this kind of formed me as an adult into who I am, was building little matchbox cars and lettering them up just like I did in real life with uh, helping my dad. So this was my way as, as a young kid 
to have my own race car and letter it up however I wanted and do whatever I wanted with it and I had a ton of fun and I would spend hours on these things and you can see just how small the detail is little Wells signs there little nod to my dad little brush I had was an old worn out one God, it maybe had one or two hairs left in that thing but it was enough to load up and get some tiny tiny lettering on this thing just for reference some of the lettering on there is smaller than the lettering on a quarter those decals I did myself yeah they're not great but I was also you know maybe a 10 year old kid doing stuff like this so I had a lot of fun doing that really grew my grew my love for vehicles and motorsports stuff like that and at the same time uh, sharpened my skills as a sign painter and really taught me how to do uh, down to the smallest detail of things so doing big stuff really didn't scare me at all at that point that's way harder to do there's a lot more room for error doing bigger projects this one I just uh, kind of roughly laid out real quick and I might move that out probably gonna have to kneel down so I can get this right right here hooked on the old peepers and actually see what I'm doing if uh, I know you can't see that but if you can see the old hat here I got tired of uh, yeah, wearing other people's hats so I went ahead and made my own merch if you want to call it that no it's not for sale if you guys really wanted some I suppose I could hand draw you a hat just like I did this one it's nothing anything fancy it's just a little bit of paint marker and a little bit of time You can see I just I have this thing loaded up fairly well and I can work pretty quick with it and uh, basically when I'm loading it I just round the end to a point and it gives me that nice control there nice consistent line Again, this is just kind of a, a freehand whatever I just I laid it out super quick uh, not even trying to match what I actually wanted to do I just wanted the spacing and uh, just kind of go for it here There we go. Once I come around and start doing the red, I'll do the uh, little YouTube logo. I'll probably come back and do just a real fine white outline around it. But for now, we're going to let this thing sit and dry. Boop. We'll let this thing sit and dry a little bit. We'll come back to it. The awesome part about using the one-shot stuff is that I could honestly take that maroon and go damn near right over this white and it's not going to bleed through it's not going to affect it and uh you know unless i'm really working it and going over it multiple times it won't bleed through or do anything like that so this stuff's awesome to work with um it's really really forgiving so anyway we'll let this sit and dry for a bit and uh yeah we'll come back to it all i'm doing is the outline of it like I said, I'll probably come back with some white, or the off-white ivory.
There we go. That looks like a YouTube play button, right? Cool. All right, I'm impatient. It's nowhere near dry. Um, like I said, with this paint, it really doesn't matter. I can overlap it. It's not going to bleed through. Uh, even if it does a little bit, I'm not concerned because, like I said, I'm going to go back and scuff this thing up after I'm done and kind of weather it out. So I'm going to get to doing some color on this thing. Even though, honestly, the uh, just kind of the ivory by itself, I really do kind of like, I still want just a little pop of color to this thing. So I'm going to jump in here and uh, go to town. I'm going to move my brush just a little bit. There we go. I don't want a huge, super huge outline on this thing. And this is the part that really matters, trying to keep this line consistent and even when you got a moving helmet and an uneven surface. that just a little bit touch that just a little bit all right there we go and actually I really really like that that kind of darker maroon against that black metallic and the, the ivory just really makes this thing pop now you can see on this one, I'm literally just going right over the white. Honestly, it's not a big fan of it because it has tacked up a little bit. I'll load this thing up just a little more. You can see my white just barely pull through right there see that this part I really do need to steady this thing up for the thinner will kind of pull this through if I get to that point but hopefully I don't get to that point again like I said if it does pull through a little bit it's all right we're gonna We're going to weather this thing up some when we're all said and done. Like right there. Yeah, it's not happy with me there. So, put a little extra on it. Boop. There we go. There we go. Not too shabby. Alright, well, is it perfect? Nope. Is it meant to be perfect? Nope. Uh, you know, if this was something that I really wanted to be just absolute, I could take a lot longer and make this just, you know, absolutely spot on, perfectly exact, all those kinds of things. But I don't. Like I've said over and over, I plan to weather this a little bit and, uh, you know, make it look like it's been on there for a long, long time. So. The brush strokes, the kind of unevenness, stuff like that, I'm perfectly fine with. So I'll move on to the other side, I'll get that done, and then uh, I may just come back and whip some white on that YouTube logo and uh, call it a day. All right, remember what I said about being careful around all the wet paint? You can see it'll focus right there. I went to grab the helmet to turn it, stuck my thumb right in the YouTube logo, and uh, smudged it all over. I did clean it up, but uh, I had red paint smudged all that way. So, not a big deal in this case. We're going to keep going with it, because like I said, it's going to get weathered anyway, so... 
that just adds to the story. But otherwise, that side's done. That side's done. And this is about done. I'm just going to go ahead and do the white anyway. And yeah, then we'll be done. We can let this thing fully dry. And we'll come back to it and weather it. So if you remember earlier when I was talking about my little race car here, guess what I still have? My little tiny paintbrush. Now I did lie a little bit for exaggeration. There's maybe one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There's ten hairs still left in it. We're going to use that to outline the uh, YouTube logo and uh, get us a nice little fine stripe around that thing. See if I can do this to where we can both see. Maybe. Yeah, we'll work with that. This little guy. Takes a little time. Not the quickest brush to use. But it gets me there. Hopefully my hat's not blocking you guys. Let me turn that bad boy around. There we go. Again, it's not perfect. When you're using about two hairs of a paintbrush, makes it hard to get it really consistent because this thing kind of just goes where it wants to go. But for something I'm just going to weather up, I think that looks pretty good. Giving this thing plenty of time to dry, uh, we're going to try a few things out here. Now, obviously, the helmet's nice and glossy, and I don't want to mess with that. I'm not going to dull out the whole helmet. I really want to keep it nice and glossy. Now, I kind of got a whole arsenal of junk here. A little buffing compound, a little uh, foam pad, you know, some uh, assortment of worn out junk, and then uh, back to the paint thinner to try and clean it up. And we'll see what kind of results we can get here. So I'm going to start with the sandpaper because that's the most aggressive. Crap, I got a little, little bit of paint on there. Anyway, uh, start with the sandpaper. Kind of no rhyme or reason. I'm just trying to think when I'm doing this of, you know, where would the wear happen? If this thing was to wear over time just from use, where would it happen? The most likely places are going to be, you know, when you're reaching up here to flip the visor up and... Probably down here when you're taking the uh, you know helmet off, you're grabbing it. So up along here and up along here. I'm still gonna hit everywhere, but you know whatever. So just kind of go with what works. The uh, sandpaper may be a hair aggressive for what I'm trying to do, but it'll get me broke through to some spots that I want to weather out. Really, this part, I mean, there's no, there's no wrong way to do this other than just completely screwing the thing up. So, I'm just kind of going around whatever tickles my fancy is 
is what it's going to get. All right, I think that's about as much as I'm going to do with the sandpaper. You can see, you know, lots of scratch marks and stuff like that. That's actually not what I want. I want it to look like it was worn through from use over the years. So we're going to grab, you know, some scotch right here. Try and kind of buff those out a little bit, I guess. I'm going to hit the whole thing just to kind of dull it out too. But, uh... You can see a little bit of the red pulling through, not a big deal. Um, most of that's going to wipe off. If it doesn't, you know, eh, whatever. Just kind of adds to that look. So, and also, I'm not too terribly concerned if I do get outside of here a little bit. I have some, I know it's going to be impossible to see from there, but I have some scratch marks all along the edge from sandpaper, from this stuff. Uh, that's why I'm buffing it later. So, this will just kind of add to that wear look instead of having, uh, see that really pulling through. It's going to add to that wear look instead of just being like sandpaper marks. It'll look like it's worn through. So I'm trying to hit the whole thing, get it all a little bit worn. Especially the maroon. That's, uh, you know, fighting me quite a bit. I probably laid that on a little thicker than I should have. If you remember back when I was painting it, I said I was trying to get it as thin as I could. And this is why. It doesn't take a lot of effort to wear it back down and kind of get that look I'm looking for. If I would have put this on full strength or even just kind of normal lettering thickness of the paint, uh, I would have had to let this thing sit for probably a couple days before I even touched it. And, uh, you know, this would have taken me forever to really burn through this paint. All right, next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to come back with a little bit of paint thinner. And kind of clean this up a little bit. I might give it plenty of time to off gas, dry off, and, uh, and then come back with the rubbing compound. Now this will, because this is reasonably fresh paint, you can see it's pulling this red down here. I hope you can see that anyway. And it's pulling the red off. And that will bleed into the white. So I'm going to have to kind of work around, take my time. I don't want to turn all the white pink. But I don't mind if it does kind of age it a little bit. And that's one thing that red's going to do is kind of give it that a little more of an antique weathered look, not being that super bright white. All right. The rest I think we'll leave for buffing. A little bit of that, uh, where's that paint? There's a little paint on there. The rest of that, uh, you know, the buffer will clean up and get rid of that red that's bleeding through, stuff like that. Um, while that is off-gassing, I'm going to move around to the front. Now, this one I'm not going to go quite as nuts. Um, I do want it just a little bit weathered, but uh, not quite as crazy as that. So, we'll get going on that. Maybe just a touch of sandpaper in here. Just to burn that red up a little bit. Remember the old, the old thumb smudge from earlier? Yep. Bringing that back. Just a hair. I don't want to. I don't want to dig into my helmet too much with that thing, so. Trying not to be too uniform on it, because when things wear, they don't wear uniform. So, maybe hit one spot a little more than another spot. You know, something 
I'm always taking my helmet off like that, right? And that's the story. And that's why maybe this spot wears a little bit more than everywhere else. But at the end of the day, I want to still be able to read it, you know? All right, I think that'll be pretty good. Um, like I said, not going too crazy on that part. I am gonna wipe it down a little bit. And hopefully, this red doesn't bite me too hard. And see, I'm kind of dabbing this into the cloth so it's not just like full strength paint thinner hitting this thing. And I also can flip the rag around and use different spots on it. That just took that uh, play button to shreds, didn't it? Oh well. Makes it interesting. Wipe a little bit here, a little bit there. There we go. Think I'm alright with that pre buffing. So we'll let those kind of this and that and that off gas for a little bit. I'll work on the other side off camera. You already kind of saw me. You know, go to town on this side, and then, uh, yeah, we'll come back and kind of buff the whole thing out and see how it looks. You know, while I'm waiting for this thing to off gas and I'm thinking about it, you know, if there's stuff that you guys would like to see me do, if you want to see me do more kind of projects like this, uh, more of the how-to stuff, or just kind of the shut up and get to work and, you know, whatever vehicle, uh, you know, let me know. I'm, I'm always up for kind of experimenting and, you know, if it's something that you're interested in and I get enough feedback that, you know, kind of everybody wants to see me do more of a certain thing, I'm for sure willing to do that. For right now, I kind of go off what gets likes and, uh, you know, what gets views. So I'm definitely open to trying different stuff or, you know, doing this or doing that. You guys let me know. So... Continue to let this thing uh, dry off, and we'll start buffing it out. All right, well, I'm sure it hasn't been long enough technically, but, you know, I'm impatient. So, I just got some, uh, some old cutting compound, nothing special, just was laying around on my shelf. And, obviously, a well-used pad here. I've used it for many, many other things. Not putting a whole lot of that on there, because I don't need a whole lot. Ah, now I'm not, not heavy, I'm not going fast obviously, and I'm not putting a lot of pressure on it. I'm not trying to burn this thing, uh, and I'm not trying to burn into that red paint too much. Because there are still some spots that are probably a little tacky. There are a few spots, obviously my wear, wear areas, that I'm going to hit a little harder. Just to try and buff some of those scratch marks out. Really give it a worn look. Which this will definitely do. Yeah. Go down here a little bit. Eat some of that up. I'm also trying to go around the edge. Remember, I had some scratch marks out there that I want to try and actually just buff out. There's a decent one right there. A little bit out here. Honestly, on something like this, the uh, the buffing is what really gives it the actual look that I'm going for. The sanding and scuffing is just kind of what gets me there. But you can see I don't want all the scratch marks. Here's a good example right here. I don't want that to look like I sanded it. I want it to look like it wore through. So I'm going to hit that spot a little bit more. Let's see what we get. There's the difference. Just a little bit of buffing 
will make it looks like it actually just wore through the paint and you can see just a little bit of the black just peeking through the white that's exactly what I want so when I was talking earlier about having the uh, the brush strokes and stuff that's really what I meant is you can see that variation in the color and the black bleeding through it that's why I wanted those brush strokes there because I knew it would do that at the end there we go let's take a look at that see how we're looking here brings the shine right back to it looks like it's almost uh, clear coated underneath there you know that's pretty good I may uh, I may buff a little bit more on this and uh, maybe I'll just wax it I don't know but anyway I'm gonna move on to the front here and this one shouldn't take a whole lot get rid of some of that wipe that down this one shouldn't take a whole lot so we'll just uh, kind of send this one if you're looking for a how to detail video this definitely isn't it but uh, yeah we'll kind of work that in more than anything right now on this one I just want to get rid of the the scuff marks from roughing this thing up All right, let's wipe that one down and see what we got there. A bunch of product down here in the lip of this thing. There we go, not too shabby. Um, I wish I didn't have the little scratch marks. I probably should have just done this with the buffer instead of hitting it with sandpaper, but, you know, it is what it is. Uh, you can still read it, kind of, if you're looking close. Yeah, that's alright. Anyway, that's, uh, you know, not too bad. I'll try and flash maybe a before and after here for you, so you can kind of see the difference, see the results. And, uh, yeah, I'll keep working on it. I'll get the other side done. And we'll come back with the uh, finished product here for you. Well, guys, overall, I'm super happy with that. Like I said, I, I may go back over time and fine-tune it a little bit more. Uh, I'll probably let this completely sit for a while and then I'll put a good coat of wax on it just to keep it protected and uh, you know preserved but overall it's nice and glossy it looks like it's almost part of the helmet you know or it came that way uh, for a little bit of time a little bit of effort you know I'm pretty pumped on that so exactly what I wanted just the old kind of worn out racing number look and uh, you know I'm happy. Something subtle, not over the top, not too crazy, and, uh, you know, got the old number on there. Anyway, I appreciate you guys hanging out with me. Uh, I hope you consider subscribing to the channel to follow along with, uh, you know, maybe more of this. If that's what you want. But it really means a lot to me that you guys are, uh, you know, liking, subscribing, all that. We're almost to 700 subscribers, and that's crazy. You know, for just uh, a dude kind of hanging out in his garage working on junk. You know, I, I'm really uh, blown away by you guys' support and uh, definitely, really, truly appreciate it. Here we go. What do you think about that? Appreciate you guys hanging out. That'll do it for this one. We'll catch you next time. Thanks.